Hey everyone, welcome back to MedRevisions. Today, we have an interesting case that revolves around hypertension and the decisions a healthcare provider might make based on different readings and risk factors. We will not just discuss one case, we will discuss several other possible scenarios that can appear in your exam. If you're studying for an exam, a healthcare professional, or simply someone who's curious about medicine, you'll find this super insightful. So, let's get started. Our patient today is a 62-year-old woman who goes for a routine checkup. Her blood pressure in the clinic is found to be 152.94. She then takes home readings for two weeks, averaging 139.88. She's a non-smoker, and she has no known history of diabetes, renal disease, or cardiovascular disease. Her 10-year risk for developing cardiovascular disease is estimated at 9%. What's the most appropriate next step? Our options are A. Initiate antihypertensive medications B. Offer lifestyle advice on diet and exercise C. No intervention required D. Start a statin E. Refer to cardiology Before we provide you with the answer, you can pause the video now and take 30 seconds to answer this question by yourself. The correct answer here is B. Offer lifestyle advice on diet and exercise why is that? Let's break it down. Firstly, she has what's called stage 1 hypertension. In the medical world, that's defined as a clinic blood pressure reading of 140-90 or higher, and a home blood pressure monitoring average of 135-85 or higher. She doesn't reach stage 2 hypertension levels, which are even higher. In stage 2, the clinic blood pressure needs to be at least 160-100 mmHg. The ABPM daytime average or HBPM average blood pressure should also be 150-95 mmHg or higher. Now, who usually gets treated with antihypertensive medications for stage 1 hypertension? Treatment is generally recommended for individuals who are under 80 years of age and have one or more of these conditions. Target organ damage. Established cardiovascular disease. Renal disease. Diabetes or those who have a 10-year cardiovascular risk of 10% or higher. Our patient doesn't meet any of these criteria. She's healthy, with no history of the mentioned diseases and her 10-year risk is below 10%. Therefore, antihypertensive medications are not indicated here. However, it's crucial to offer lifestyle advice on diet and exercise, as these changes can significantly impact blood pressure and overall cardiovascular health. What about statins? Well, statins would be considered if her 10-year risk of developing cardiovascular disease was 10% or higher, and lifestyle modifications were ineffective. But her risk is below this threshold, so no statins for now. Having said that, now let's discuss other scenarios that have appeared in the exam. Take 50 seconds to answer these questions. Pause the video now. Alright. So, here's the case. We have a 58-year-old male who comes in for his annual checkup. He's got a history of type 2 diabetes managed with metformin, and he also has mild asthma. His latest HbA1c levels show he's got his diabetes under good control. However, his blood pressure is found to be elevated at 160-80 mmHg. Additional tests confirm this elevation. What should we do next? Based on the options given. The correct answer is C. Ramipril. But why Ramipril? Let's explore. First up, Ramipril is an ACE inhibitor, that's angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitor. In diabetic patients with hypertension, ACE inhibitors are the go-to first-line agents for antihypertensive therapy. Not only do they control blood pressure, but they also offer renal protection, crucial for diabetic patients. What about the other options? Amlodipine is a calcium channel blocker. It's not usually the first option for diabetic hypertensive patients. It's a second-line choice in this case. However, they are the first-line drug in patients over greater than or equal to 55 years or of Afro-Caribbean origin. Lozartan is an angiotensin II receptor blocker, or ARB. Typically, it's used when someone can't tolerate ACE inhibitors. For example, the question might state the patient is on ACE inhibitor and is he or she is complaining of dry cough. Atenolol is a beta blocker. 
It's not generally the first pick for hypertension, unless there are other issues like heart disease. Hydrochlorothiazide is a thiazide diuretic. It's not the primary choice for hypertensive patients with diabetes, but may be used additionally. If potassium greater than 4.5, but if the potassium is less than 4.5, spiralactone is preferred. There are some exceptions, such as people of Afro-Caribbean origin and women who may become pregnant, they should not start with an ACE inhibitor like Ramipril. All right then, try this case now. Pause the video and try to answer this in 50 seconds. This one has a bit of a twist, so after you have answered the question grab your notepads and let's get started. We have a 43-year-old woman who recently had a brief hospital admission due to a paracetamol overdose. She has a history of depression, managed with sertraline, and presents with an elevated blood pressure of 166-85 mmHg. She shows no signs of end-organ damage like headaches or blurred vision. So, what's our next step? Our options are A. Screen for causes of secondary hypertension B. Initiate therapy with amlodipine C. Recheck her blood pressure after a two-week interval D. Offer ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. E. Initiate therapy with Ramipril. The correct answer is D. Offer ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. But why this option? Let's break it down. Ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, also known as ABPM. According to the National Institute for Clinical Excellence, or NICE, this is the recommended first step to confirm hypertension if clinic readings are elevated. ABPM helps us get a clearer picture of blood pressure levels throughout the day and also rules out white coat hypertension. Let's quickly go through the other options and why they are not as suitable. Screening for secondary causes of hypertension is generally reserved for specific cases such as younger patients or those with resistant hypertension. Our patient doesn't fit these criteria. Jumping straight to antihypertensive medications like amlodipine or ramipril isn't recommended without first confirming the diagnosis using ABPM. Simply rechecking the blood pressure after two weeks might seem cautious, but it's not the best approach given her significantly elevated blood pressure. We need diagnostic clarification sooner rather than later. It's important to note that if hypertension is confirmed, stepwise drug treatment usually follows. Here's a quick summary of the important points you should note for the exam. If the patient is under 55, an ACE inhibitor is usually the first choice. If older or of Black African or Caribbean origin, a calcium channel blocker is often recommended. If end organ damage, for example renal disease or retinopathy, or on blood pressure is not 140-90 in a diabetic patient, the choice is ACE inhibitor. If the patient is not tolerant for ACE inhibitor, switch to an angiotensin II receptor blocker, ARB, like Lozartan. Sometimes the examiner will want you to know the target blood pressure in a diabetic patient. It should be less than 140-90 mmHg. Here's a quick summary of the drug treatment steps. Sometimes, a single medication may not be enough to control the blood pressure. In such cases, combining an ACE inhibitor with a calcium channel blocker is often the next step. If still not controlled, adding a thiazide-like diuretic to the mix is recommended. This creates a triple therapy aimed at controlling your high blood pressure. And that wraps up today's case scenarios. Elevated blood pressure can be a complex issue to manage and the examiner will present you with different styles of questions. Ensure you check out our question bank, which has helped thousands of doctors to pass their exam. We offer more than 4,600 exam-style questions with excellent notes all for just $34 for three months. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. Feel free to drop your questions or comments below. See you in the next video.